So we explained this in our previous video, but due to the circumstances of this past week in which anti-racism, anti-police brutality protests have erupted across the country in hundreds of cities and have been met with extreme indiscriminate police brutality, uh, we decided to cancel our sponsorship deals for the week and uh, also just kind of abandon our typical show schedule. Yeah. So... This isn't weekly weird news. This is just, it's just a, a video. video. <laughs> uh, generally, this channel is all about having a good, healthy laugh about things happening in the news, even when they're kind of terrible. But that's pretty much impossible to do during a time when people exercising their First Amendment rights to protest police violence are being met with, um, surprise, police violence. Yeah, now this has resulted in a whole lot of innocent people getting thrown in jail. But thanks to so many of you, our fundraising campaign for the Bail Project managed to raise over $40,000 in just the past few days. So thank you to, so much to everyone who donated. And if you if you haven't donated yet or you'd like to donate, the link is down in the description. Uh, I think it ends tomorrow. So Monday night it'll end because I think it's great that we keep continuing to raise money. Yeah. But as sooner rather than later, the money should go to the bail project yes. because people need it now. So yeah. we're we're not doing like even a full week. We're blown away by the amount of donations that it's already received. So it'll be ending uh, Monday night so that we can get that money to the bail project and the bail project can get that money to the people who need it. Now, meanwhile, our bail project fundraiser, it has landed us on a very prestigious list, though. The Traders of America list uh, that was created by Twitter user and games journalist one angry gamer HD. Very angry. Very high def. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've been relentlessly keeping track of every influencer and company that's expressed even the slightest amount of support for these anti-racism and anti-police brutality protests. So uh, thank you to all of you out there. Uh, we couldn't have got on this very, very prestigious list if it wasn't for you. Yeah, we're right there just next to Imagine Dragons. And the singer of Hatebreed. Never thought I'd find myself fighting alongside Imagine Dragons. Uh -huh. but, uh, I guess now, there we are. Thanks to this list, our brand is radioactive. Uh, yes. Well, also the list is just a great, uh, it's a great list, resource. Great, great list for people that you probably should follow. Yeah, or, except for know. J.K. Rowling, she's on there for some reason. Oh, yeah. And well. she, she fucking sucks. Yeah, there's a bunch of people on there I don't agree with, <laughs> but uh, in general, it's a good person list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's because uh, you know being against racism, pretty low bar. Yeah. You uh, see that there was like a Trump ad that went out to supporters. It was like. Show your support against, or show your show that you're against against uh, against an, 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 Antifa, which is uh, against people who are against Anti fascism. Anti Antifa, so just yeah. fa, just just fascism. What does yeah. the fa stand for? Hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah, you should really watch our previous video if you haven't already. We've kind of covered a lot of this. It, a it lot sets more the stage depth. for what happened. This yeah, past week. but uh, one thing that we talked about was how people that are only getting their news from the mainstream media are generally getting a very distorted picture of things with. These overwhelmingly peaceful demonstrations being all just sort of categorized as riots and the protesters all being categorized as looters. Obviously, that's not true across the board uh, with the media, but you know, social media remains the best window into what's really going on out there as protesters and bystanders post videos and personal accounts of their experiences. Uh, those experiences largely follow a pattern. You got a peaceful, nonviolent protest. And truckloads of cops show up in riot gear, and the cops start firing tear gas and shooting mace and pepper balls into the crowd, and that's when things get a little chaotic. Yeah. Now, it's even more insidious in some places, though. In New York City in particular, the police strategy has involved what's known as kettling, where multiple lines of cops surround protesters, making it impossible for them to actually leave the area in time for the curfew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My goddamn ass, bro. Oh! Okay, so let him in then. Yes, look, look, I'm not even doing anything. Okay, 
Yeah. It tells me on the app that I can show you guys something. It tells me that I can show you guys you can't arrest me. Are you serious? Are you serious? And they've also shut down subway entrances near protests. They did the same thing in L.A. where it's like, yeah. and same with buses. Everybody like, go home, but also, um, good luck. Yeah, a big we, shout out to all the essential workers out there who take the bus and subway into work. Yeah. I guess you're going to get arrested now. Mm -hmm. uh, the result uh, is that once around curfew time comes, uh, or it is, is often the case, 10 to 30 minutes before curfew is even supposed to start, they just start attacking protesters under the pretense that they're all violating curfew. It's been easy to shout, you shouldn't have been out past curfew. What'd you expect? But there have been countless examples of protesters being literally unable to leave these protests in time. Yeah, there's uh, the, the strategy. It's like on one street, there'll be a line of cops over here, a line of cops over just here. Push them together. Push the protesters together. And it, it gets to the point where like it, the protesters can't even fucking move. Like, literally, to, like, try to breathe, they're having to push up against the police. And the police is like, well, they're pushing the police line. They're aggravating. Time to start, time to start cracking skulls. On the other end of the media thing, too, like, earlier today, the headline for yesterday's worldwide rallies was tens of thousands of protesters show up to worldwide rallies. Uh, Probably a little more than that. Yeah, I'd say hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people uh, showed well, up to these yeah, protests. When you add the, like, worldwide element, which, by the way, the U.K., Really redeeming yourselves in my eyes by pushing that statue of that, uh, that, so that slave ship captain into the sea. Also, the video of the, uh, the horse cop running into a streetlight. Yeah, I, I did kind of feel bad for that cop because that looked like a it looked real very gnarly <laughs> injury. But also, like, I feel like maybe maybe horses aren't the best uh, vehicles <laughs> to be taking into large, loud crowds because they uh, they've been known to get spooked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, since our last video Thursday, more I don't whenever who it was, knows two when years ago feels guess, like yeah. In just those matter of days, there's been plenty more examples of police violence on unarmed peaceful protesters who pose no threat whatsoever. And um, probably the most shocking example for like even people who are not even paying that close of attention yeah. took place in Buffalo, New York. Now at this point, there's a good chance you have seen those already. But when we say shocking, we we do mean shocking. Just prepare yourselves or look away. Yeah. Well, on, on Thursday night, a 75-year-old activist and protester named Martin Gugino walked up to police in front of City Hall in Buffalo carrying a helmet and his phone. So both hands got stuff in him. Yeah. Uh, he spoke to the cops for a few seconds. We don't know what he said. Maybe he told them to go fuck themselves. And if he did, That's still fine. doesn't warrant what happened no. next. Because uh, they pushed him to the ground. Uh, he tripped. He hit his head. Very hard in the concrete. You can hear it from across the street in one of yeah, the videos. Yeah, here. So yeah, as you can see, he's bleeding out of his ears. He's not moving. He looks like he's fucking dead. Yeah. Uh, apparently, somehow he survived, though, and he's in stable condition, as they yeah. say, though. Everyone, people need to learn what these terms mean. Yeah. That all stable means is that his condition isn't getting any worse mm -hmm. or getting any better. I, a guy I knew in high school uh, had a skateboarding accident, very similar to what happened to this man. Uh, he was in stable condition for a week until they took him off life support because he was brain dead. So, like, I don't know. This guy, uh, it's safe to say, like with anything else, his life has been altered in a very serious way by the actions yeah, of the police. No matter how, he, if he comes out of it feeling fine, which I don't think will be the case. No. Uh, his life will have been severely altered. Yeah. Now, at this point, it's entirely possible to look at this situation and just see, you know, a terrible mistake. Uh, they didn't show him that hard, and he just lost his balance. Yeah, well, maybe cops shouldn't be shoving the elderly at all. Yeah. How about how that? How about that? Yeah. A man who is clearly posing no threat whatsoever. No. In fact, looked like he was returning one of the cop's helmets or something yeah. like that, uh, was just shoved to the ground. And what makes things worse is that during and after it happened, just no care in the world, just yeah. marching forward and, uh, yeah. well, that guy's on the ground bleeding. That's just what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, after he falls, yeah, no one checks in on him, blah, 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 blah. They don't offer any kind of medical assistance. One guy appears to try, but a fellow cop quickly stops him. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, they've cracked this old man's skull so badly he's bleeding from the ears, but hey, guess what? It's not their problem. Not their problem anymore. The real problem is the bystander screaming at the cops for inflicting a serious injury on a guy who posed them no threat whatsoever. Yeah, they just immediately start attacking these people who are rightfully, like, I can't imagine, if this happened in front of me, like, what the fuck I are you doing? I would be losing it. Yeah. And the cops would be running at me mm -hmm. and not trying to help this man on the ground. He yeah, looks exactly. like he's dying. But yeah, so fast forward. 
couple hours of days. Who knows? Time isn't real anymore. But mm-hmm. after enough public outcry, the Buffalo PD, they did suspend the two officers who shoved Gugina. And all 57 members of the Buffalo PD emergency response team, they resigned from that unit. Mm-hmm. Well, good for them, right? Mm-hmm. Right, right. So uh-huh. they... Sounds, sounds all right at first. Especially they, if you don't look past the headline. They did not resign because they were disgusted about this incident and no longer wanted to be involved or associated in this kind of indiscriminate police brutality. They resigned in solidarity with the two suspended officers, saying that these suspensions were unwarranted since they were all simply following orders, which is a phrase that, I don't know, we've heard other places before. Yeah, it's so strange. Where have I heard? I was just, just following, following orders. orders. Yeah. Weird. Also, yeah. It was just really funny seeing all the headlines around this and immediately, like it would just be headline and then immediate follow up tweet. By the way, yeah. they didn't resign because of what was wrong. Yeah. They resigned because they were supporting their, their brothers in blue. Yeah. Now, the two officers, they were then charged with felony assault. And upon uh, that, they were released from the courthouse uh, where they were met with a huge crowd of fellow officers giving them a big, long round of applause. You've been through so much. Yeah. Also, you deserve it for... Crushing that old man's skull. I think it was Probably. Cody Johnson who said, this is this is the A and A cab right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean all cops. Yeah. Yeah. People like to say that bad cops are just a few bad apples, but they also conveniently forget the rest of that proverb. A few bad apples spoil the bunch. You're, you're misconstruing things, mm-hmm. as people often do with the Bible. Yeah. Uh, and, and listen, this is at this point, it's becoming more and more clear that perhaps the entire apple tree is diseased and yes. rotting. And meanwhile, Buffalo's Democrat mayor, Byron Brown, has refused to actually fire the two officers and even had the audacity to tell reporters that 75-year-old Martin Gugino was an agitator who was trying to spark up the crowd of people. Yeah, he was like trying to paint this guy. He's like, this is the guy that was behind all the looting. He's the head of Antifa, basically. It's just like, holy shit. Like, the guy does have a long history of activism. Yes, but like, activism. Know, peacefully protesting, yeah. like, for a number of causes. He's, he, he, I, he was not involved in any violence or looting or anything like that based on literally anyone who knows this man. They're just like, no, he would never. Th- this is ridiculous. And even if he was. Yeah, even if he was. <laughs> yeah. Like, come the fuck on. Yeah. But like, th- yeah. I, ugh, shit fucking yeah. angers. I, I've just been angry for an entire week and it has fried my brain. I am. Yes, it's I cannot, very hard to do things. I can't think straight. Like I've been having trouble sleeping. Yeah, I like it. And this, as we've said before, very, very obvious that this is something that affects people a lot more than just us. Right. I'm just, I'm just watching this shit on the internet for the most part. Yeah. I'm not living it, and it's just, I don't know. It's this weird thing where it's, it's clearly not healthy to be looking at just a constant stream of. Police violence yeah. for days at a time, but we but have to be aware you, of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, like it would be it would be healthy to look away, mm-hmm. but like we we can't. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, when I went to the, the the protest locally here, it was very peaceful. There were no problems. Yeah. The, the cops didn't intervene, so it's the, it's not like I have that experience in real life. But I'm sitting on line and watching even here in Los Angeles, just in different parts of it, where terrible things are happening. Yeah, and it just you know. It doesn't really put you in the best mindset. I mean, and like so. they've they've straight up killed people. Yes, a bunch of people, and a, like there was a this one kid in uh, I think it was Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. who was like well, not even part of the protest, just walking home from his job and like stopped to get a look at it, and police shot a fucking rubber bullet directly at his head. He drops just just drops, and it like. Broke the front of his skull. Like he's he's gonna be fucked up. Like for the a rest teenage of his girl life. got killed from tear gas inhalation. Oh yeah, yeah. A girl with she had like asthma and didn't uh, have asthma. Her family confirmed uh, that. But, okay, so that's but that's even worse. Like that's yeah. That, there's a lot of people saying online that like uh, the older tear gas gets, the more potentially fatal it is. So it, they might have been using old canisters of tear gas. Anything could have happened. And there was, uh, uh, but uh, there it was, was a direct result of uh, the police. Uh, I can't remember which town it was, but they're like, we will now stop using tear gas. But like, the actual reason was that they had used all of their tear We're gas. We're out. <laughs> yeah. We're all out. They went through their entire year's supply of tear gas. I love that they, they 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 tried to like. Uh, I guess that would be the actual term for virtue signaling, where they're like, "Don't worry, we've decided as an organization yeah. to no longer use 
something that has been banned in actual war. Yeah. Meanwhile, like, up in Seattle, their mayor was like, look, we're going to stop using tear gas for 30 days. And then the, the police, because these mayors have no fucking control over the police, the police were like, no, nah, we're just going to keep using it. Boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the, it really is a problem where these police departments, they're just not accountable to anyone. Even like that's been even proven the mayors of very their well cities. by this by but these protests. There, there was this fucking police union quote where this guy was talking about Garcetti and like mm-hmm. he sounded like a mafia enforcer person. Like, oh, you don't want to be a real any, shame if, uh, if we you, stop protecting your man. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, we showed you a whole lot of footage of police brutality in our previous episode. Uh, but there's, of course, been a lot more since then. So, uh, yeah. Brace yourself or tune away. I have cut a bunch of these together for you. Let's just let's just play those clips now. just attacked my mom we're riding down the street and they threw a tear gas at my mom and shattered her phone where's your phone at where's your phone we're in our cars going down the street and they threw a gas thing at my mom's hand we're going down the street there's this one right here over here look at him oh my god y'all hit my mama oh my god my name is Miles Carter. I live in the town of Tonawanda. I don't live in the city of Buffalo. My mosque is over on Genesee Street. Fuck. Guys, somebody scream record this, please. Oh, fuck. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hands up. Hands up. Whoa, 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 whoa. My hands are up. My hands are up. Get on the ground. Somebody scream record this, please. Uh. Arrest. Why am I under arrest? I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing shit. I have my hands in the air. Why am I under arrest? Now, 
Obviously, that's not everything. Not even close. It is just a, a few examples of police brutality that happen to be caught on camera and happen to be like clear and not just an absolute mess. Uh, if you really want to dive down a depressing rabbit hole, there's a Google spreadsheet that we will link below featuring pretty much every video of police brutality that's been posted online in the past week or so. It's, it's sortable by city. Uh, it's crazy that there's that much that it has categories uh, and Yeah, this sorting. particular spreadsheet has almost 400 entries. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the spreadsheet is based off an extremely long Twitter thread by attorney T. Greg Doucette. So he's definitely worth a follow if you want to keep track of all this. Just smash that bell if you want to just get instant police to your phone. But hey, uh, listen, in some actual positive news, it looks like the city of Minneapolis, where George Floyd was killed by police, setting off all of this, might be about to take a huge step towards fixing this very institutional problem. Just disband the entire Minneapolis Police Department and rebuild it from scratch. Now, there's apparently a veto-proof majority of Minneapolis City Council members planning to sign off on this. How that would actually work, obviously, it's going to take a while to sort that out. But based on public statements from some city council members, the end result would be a much smaller role for police, with social workers and fire departments dealing with many of the nonviolent situations police currently deal with, which is something we talked about on the last episode. Yeah, it's like, I didn't realize this, but it's like more than half of incidents where police shoot people are uh, mental health checks and like drug overdoses, mm -hmm. like basically situations where... There probably doesn't need to be guns drawn, yeah. guns blazing. They're not exactly the most and, qualified And they don't know situations. what the fuck they're doing. Exactly. Like they, so part of this is like training, uh, giving giving firefighters like uh, more EMT training to yeah. deal with that and and um, hiring way more like psychologists and uh, so mental health professionals. That's the thing is when you see people when you see people reacting extremely negatively to defund the police mm -hmm. or disband the police online, it's like, listen, there's some nuance there. They're talking about restructuring the way that these funds are handled. Yeah. So instead of police, you get mental health specialists. You get uh, drug specialists. Yeah, like actually shrinking the role yes. the, of what police do. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So far, it's, it seems like a great first step that hopefully more cities start considering. Uh, it's pretty wild. Like, if you told me even two weeks ago that something like this would have any, you know, momentum at all, I'd be shocked. But uh, yeah, but that's even where we are. That's, it, this is what's especially unique about this situation is they're like civil rights historians online are like, no, this is something different from anything we've, we've uh, seen. I mean, it absolutely is. Yeah. We've, America's had like riots and protest movements, mm -hmm. but never anything on this scale in so many places. Bleeding over into other countries. Yeah, I mean, organized like the, very well. The closest thing is like maybe Occupy, but like that was that that turned into something else after like two. Yeah, weeks. it did. Because like, I went down there for that too, and it was just like, yeah, this is this yeah. is certainly sending a message. But I was the, there on the last night of Occupy LA. It was like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and mm -hmm. it was uh, it's pretty scary. Like riot cops everywhere, yeah. and it was like we left like right right before they started enforcing curfew. Because I'm like, I don't. I don't want to go to jail tonight. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. Uh, anyways, this isn't really weekly weird news at all, but we might as well still go through some of the uh, few, very few news headlines from the past week that were generally funny, just to lighten up the mood. You know, everyone, uh, we, want, we, uh, we want to have a good time, but... <laughs> some of them not so light. Anyway, first headline. K-pop stands flooded the White Lives Matter hashtag on Twitter and Instagram with fan cams and memes to drown out racist posts. And they, every new hashtag that has popped up uh, basically, like, White Lives Matter, uh, like, all this, like, QAnon shit. Like, mm -hmm. the QAnon people, they were getting very frustrated. They had to keep, like, using, like, non-Roman uh, non uh, or Arabic characters or whatever. Or non-Roman. Uh, uh, they, they had to use those weird fucking characters with all the lines and shit on them yeah. for their new hashtags. But, mm -hmm. like, instantly, the K-pop the stands were on it. You'd, click on, to, you'd see it trending and click on it, it's just fucking fan cams all the way down. I, I spun a few tracks on the old Spotify in solidarity of the K-pop. I was very surprised to find how many uh, plays they have, although I should have seen that coming. Oh, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it at all. And nor do I support the uh, some of the things that go on in the background of Korean pop music. But the fans, 
They're out there doing good work right they now. They are. Yes. They are. And, the fans and have nothing to do with. And hopefully, what goes once on we in the solve racism, we, we can, can solve, solve the uh, pop stuff. extremely exploitative uh, <laughs> Korean music industry yes. as well. Uh, next headline: Fox News apologizes for graphic displaying stock market performance after death of George Floyd, MLK. Yeah. This like, was, hey, do you want to you want to have a great economy? Like, Seems like every time some of the civil unrest happens. Yeah. If we look at this graph here, you know, this George Floyd is actually driven up to S and P five hundred by an even wider margin than the MLK assassination. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I I don't know what we're supposed to take away from this, but um, great news for investors. I want to hope that the person that did the graphic design for that graph like was completely unaware of what they were looking at. Just like, what kind of message is this sending? Yeah. Nah, I don't know. They just asked me to do it. Yeah, it's it it's bizarre. Like I thought it was parody when I first saw it. Like, yeah. How is this fucking real? Yeah. Well, turns out that uh, every time this happens, the stocks go up, yeah. which is which sends a terrible message. Yeah, but Oof. the stock market is not the economy. Mm -hmm. Part of the economy, but it doesn't reflect, you know, the you know, personal financial situation of your average person. Millions of Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Man who trains San Jose police about bias, severely injured by riot gun during George Floyd protest. This one was pretty, they shot him in the dick. He's not gonna be able to have kids. <laughs> Sorry for laughing, but that's, it's ridiculous that that would happen. Yeah, he's this local like activist, this black dude who like for years has like done training sessions with the San Jose PD about like, yeah. you know, maybe you don't pull over every black person you see. And he saw them just like indiscriminately just firing on this crowd. And he tried to get between them and be like, guys, 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 you know me. And they're just like, <laughs> no, no, nope. I'm going to shoot you in the dick. This and keeps make you... happening too. Is it like uh, civic leaders in different cities yeah. end up being on the receiving end of police brutality. There was uh, the head of the Chicago, like the police board, which is like the civilian oversight board. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like the, you know, the school board isn't teachers. It's, it's community members. Yeah. So this guy, the head of that, also black. He was at the protest on the police side, just observing things. How'd you get back here? Shit got a little, uh, you yeah. know, shit started getting chaotic, and boom, he got just the shit beat out of him. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, clearly he had to have been a protester. Just look at him. Clearly. Uh, in Klamath Falls, Oregon, victory declared over Antifa, which never showed up. Because this, I wanted yeah. to get into this, like, deeper... It's hard to really track it, but on like next door and on Facebook, a bunch of towns, but specifically like towns in uh, the Pacific Northwest, just got it in their heads based off of nothing that there were buses full of Antifa driving to their city to fuck shit up. And uh, like there was even someone caught it on like uh, the Chicago or one of the major city like police scanners. They're like, we need to send some guys out to the highway to stop that bus. It's just, it, there's what no... What fucking bus? Yeah, they're, they're, I, they're, they just made this shit up. It's just like a fucking rumor that started swirling online. It's a school bus that looks like it's from the movie Mad Max, yeah. I guarantee it. Well, and and so in, uh, in this one town in Washington, this one family who just happens to own an old school bus that they repurposed into an RV... See, that's what I imagine when I think of an Antifa bus, not yeah. a Greyhound or... That's what this, what this one family, they're just camping on campgrounds in this bus, and, like, the local community, they're like, there it is, the Antifa bus, and they, like... Cut down trees on the road so they couldn't get out. Like it was, this, they could have been killed. Luckily, like some other people came by and like moved the trees out of the way. Excuse but. me, sir. Do you are are do you like fascists or do not like fascists? Uh, well, obviously, I don't like fascists. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah it's, uh, do you see Meghan McCain absolutely busting a spring over people uh, showing the D-Day picture and saying like, uh, you know, biggest no. biggest anti-fa action? Or Seems like something she would do. Yeah. This is so disrespectful. Meghan McCain also, she was like, she's like, I can't even leave my apartment right now. She wasn't because, even there. Because New York is a war zone. And then it turns out she's been like in upstate New York, like on a fucking mansion estate uh, for like two months. Hasn't been in the city this entire time. Like a bunch of like other people who like live in her building. Like, one, Megan, of the, one of the writers of Samantha B. was yeah, like, she, I live Megan, in your I, building. I live in your building. I took a walk earlier this morning. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, anyways, moving on. Maine Association of Police accuses demonstrators of racism towards cops. <laughs> this is a talking no, point. You. I've seen this so much on fucking Twitter where people are like, well, like when you say all police are bad, isn't that pretty much the same as saying all black people are bad? <laughs> and I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to even 
explain further, but uh, people are born black. Mm-hmm. People become police. Police is a, is a job. Yes. It's a, it's a institutional culture. Yeah, also and, there's, uh, there's th- this is a lot more to get into, but basically if you are a good cop, in the police force, it is extremely hard yeah, for you to report or bring justice against anyone within the yeah. police force without there's being severe harassed retaliation. or yeah or retaliated against. Yeah, it happens so, quite a bit. There's a lot of uh, a lot of examples of this of guys yes. guys trying to just you know trying to keep things on the level, reporting yeah. you know maybe some bad shit their coworkers did, and just having the entire police department. Uh, come down on them, push them out, and just being harassed for years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. (sighs) Niagara Falls officials searching for raccoons handed out to locals outside of 7-Eleven. Someone found a a litter of raccoons and was just handing them out outside of 7-Eleven. You guys want these these wild and crazy cats out there? They are very cute when they're tiny. Of course they are. Their hands are like human hands. That's the problem. They're very mischievous. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't trust raccoons and I don't like them, but I respect them. They, they get do. it done. They do. They're they survivors. Do. Yes. But, uh, but you don't want one in your house. Don't take a baby raccoon. Yeah, that's the thing is if you go to a 7-Eleven and someone's handing out raccoons, no. just look the other way. Yeah, just get your big gulp and go home. Mm-hmm. U.S. gun owners aim firearms at their genitals to settle feud within community. <laughs> Wasn't this like a trolling campaign? I thought this was like... I, Everyone in solidarity is posting their guns at their crotches no, to try to get someone to accidentally so, shoot themselves. From what I read, it was like within the gun community, there were some people who were like, you know, very obsessive, uh, rightfully so, with stuff like trigger discipline, mm-hmm. like keeping the safety on and not, you know, don't point the gun at something unless you want it to die. And the rest of the people are like, oh, you don't think you don't think I know what I'm doing with my gun? Look. Safety's off. I got my finger on the Twitter, the tr- the, tr- the trigger. It's pointed at my dick. Nothing bad happens. Yeah. Guess I know guns better than you, buddy. Despite there being no less than at least five or six videos online of actual trained police officers shooting themselves in the dicks. Yeah. There's that one guy. Remember the guy in the cr- classroom? Oh, Where he just God. tries to walk it off after because yeah. he's in a room full of children? Yeah. Yep. So I'm... Um, yeah. Uh, hey, get your teacher in here. I got to go to the bathroom real that's quick. That's a classic. Got a problem here. Yeah. And final headline, Mexican senator accidentally goes topless on Zoom meeting. And she's a 66-year-old woman. She was, she's like, you she know looks what? great. She's like, you know what? It was an accident, but I'm not ashamed. Good. I'm proud. These tits have breastfed four, four adults who I am proud of today. Mm-hmm. Good. If you don't like it, well, you don't like your damn self. Did she resign in shame or is she still a senator? She's still a senator. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good for her. We need more brave... Senators, Congress people going out there topless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shows real bravery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you feel safe in your own skin. You do. Proud of that body. You know. Exactly. Anyways, that's it for not weekly weird news. Uh, well, I think we're going to try to get back on our regular scheduled program uh, next week. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that any of the stories are going to be fun. Yeah, the or pro- funny. protest news isn't going away because the seem protests like it. aren't going away. No. And you know what? Good because. Uh, Maybe we can they, check in on Quibi. What's Quibi up to? Oh, uh, they're gonna start blaming George Floyd for them like going out of business now. And Jeffrey Katzenberg's gonna be like, "Well, you know, people are out protesting and they're not watching Quibi. That's the problem." Katzenberg, if you wanted to make money, you should have made an app where people can upload footage of police brutality to it. Yeah, for watching. Mm-hmm. Should have thought of that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, none of this is slowing down, and good because uh, so far, in a lot of cases, it has been quite effective. Seems uh, as though it's uh, it's having a real effect, yeah, which like hopefully that, is lasting. That Breonna Taylor case that kind of got uh, happened around the same time as Hoping George Floyd. Hoping people would forget about it. Yeah, that one sort of got it got lost in the mix, but uh, you know enough people made sure to include that. Just so uh, happened to be her birthday uh, yeah, Saturday the, of this weekend. The investigation and... into that has reopened. I mean, obviously, like none of the cops involved in the George Floyd death would have. Nothing would have happened to any of them without this. Minneapolis wouldn't be trying to reform their entire. A police process like the the shifts in just like public opinion um, have been huge and good and uh, you know what why why stop now if the, keep if that the, shit going if the Minneapolis kid mayor hadn't gotten booed straight to his face yesterday would would this be happening today I, he is forty four <laughs> years old but I like he looks like a kid. I'm like what 
looks like Kirk Cameron from like uh, Growing Pains. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Yeah, it's weird. Yes. Anyways, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you all very soon, hopefully. And uh, if you again go down to the donation link, uh, I think it'll be ending sometime tomorrow because we want to get the money there and that money eventually to the people who need it yeah. uh, as quickly as possible. So check out the link, donate if you still can, and uh, we'll see you sometime soon. Bye-bye. Bye.